Okay, an update and some notes on the ESP8266 and the AS5048A digital setting circles. So, um, what happened was, this, um, this is a weak spot on this board because this gets handled on the scope as I'm doing testing, and so I had to replace this. And um, I think I want to redo this board because as I was trying to reprogram the, uh, the module, I um, discovered that my original board that I'd made had um, uh, also developed the same problem. The, uh, the voltage regulator had developed a, uh, a crack here, and so it wasn't producing bad voltages, VCC, to the chip, and the chip's very sensitive to noise, and so this thing was crackling like mad. And then I couldn't program it, so I rebuilt this board, rebuilt a new board for it, and um, it... Uh, it's on a it's on a much better quality uh, board, and I'm going to put some feet on it. But in the process of doing that, my um, serial programmer, uh, pack, well, not programmer, um, uh, USB to um, to serial converter, packed it in. Not only that one, but this one's flaky. It gets to a certain point in um, uploading to the uh, to the microprocessor to the ESP8266, it gets to a certain point and then it fails. So that one's dead too. So out of all of that, I finally got to the point where I have a new um, uh, flashing board, board for burning firmwares onto our, um, our device and a test bed so I can plug in my good hand, handy dandy Lego um, test bench for the, um, for the software in the sensors. So yeah, and then I also hooked it up to the Salier to um, take a look at what the uh, Mas Miso Mosey serial clock, what they were doing, making sure that they were communicating as expected and um, f figured out that, yeah, they are doing what they're expected to do with, um, with both, well, and now on to the software with both the original version of my software, as well as the version that, that I'm rewriting to make use of the um, Zeotrope Zo Labs AS5048A uh, library. So anyways, I'm rewriting the code to do the following. Originally, in my um, while one loop, or just called loop, in uh, Arduino parlance, so in here, I was doing a couple of things. So I was taking samples, and then I was adding those to smoothing array. So let's just say yeah, smoothing those samples. And then it, I was listening for, um, for an open on my uh, Wi-Fi port. And if I get one, then I will send back send back data and then end while so that is basically what the what the main loop was doing and so um, now what I'm going to do is instead of keeping a running collection of samples because there's some math involved in that and I don't want to mess up with the um, with the don't want to mess too much with the um, radio uh, operations because I think that's causing me some resets. I'm going to simplify the, the while loop to listen and then get and send back data. So instead of doing this, get and send back data. So get data is um, take samples, return um, average, let's say. Let's call it average, but really we know it's the circular mean and we get that from uh, arctans of the sines and cosines of the actual angle. So yeah, that is what um, today's uh, programming project is, is to rewrite this using the um, Zoetrope Labs library and um, do some testing. There we go. Okay, so it's time to do more work on the um, <clears throat> telescope digital setting circles project. And in order to move on to the next level of that thing, I think I need to um, add a display to it so that I can understand 
um, not necessarily what it's well what it's sending what it thinks it's sending to the um, sky safari but also I want to be able to um, add the ability to set a zero point for both of the axes so that um, I can uh, I can get a sense of calibration on on the uh, angular position sensors so adding a display to it there's a number of things I could use I could use this little um, I squared C jobby that is an OLED um, I can use a touch screen TFT but it's got all these buttons that uh, well I guess are for um, off of a, they're repurposing these off of a off of a cell phone and I'm forget some Nokia cell phone I think but they were made in the bazillions and they new old stock and they're repurposing them but I think what I'm going to use is um, one of these TFT jobbies um, about uh, 1.8 inch in diagonal and um, it uh, does uh, 128 by um, 6 160 uh, pixels so I should be able to act whoops did I just turn that guy off no I unplugged it a bit yeah unplugged the backlight that's what I did um, so I should be able to um, get uh, a fairly reasonable no it's not plugged into the right port no the ground the ground for the backlight there we go reboots so um so yeah I should be able to get a fairly reasonable um, six digits of display um, that I can actually read from a distance, making this as tiny as possible is not really what I need to do at this point. And if I do want to make it as tiny as possible, these actually produce a really nice um, readout. So I might use those for um, the next version if I just want to um, have like a status display. Not sure how much power these things consume. I haven't done any uh, budgeting on power for those yet, but that will come later. Right now I just want to cobble something together so that I have a bit of a display on there and I can um, do some correlation between what the uh, sensors are putting out and what the telescope actually points at without using the intermediary of Sky Safari. That's the plan. Um, stay tuned. Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to use this for is it has an SD card that you can certainly read from. I'm going to see if you can write to it as well. So it would be useful as a data logger. So if I have a button on my um, uh, on my uh, an input button, I can hit capture and it'll it'll capture the current position that the scope uh, that the magnetic or the angular position sensors are are reading, so that I can have a history log of positions that I can correlate with what I was what I what I was looking at in Sky Safari, so I can do some regression analysis, or re, um, I can look at the history of what I've been doing um, by uh, by having that. But this and a couple of buttons is probably all I need. So uh, the other thing I want to put in that thing is a battery and a and a battery charge circuit. So a battery like that sitting at the bottom. So we're automatically looking at a case that's about that wide but that's okay because we need um, buttons for a UI here and yeah and this inside of it so might even be big like this because we need buttons there and we need jacks for the for the um, for the connectors too because then we can stick the uh, charging module in here. Yeah, there we go. So charging module in here, charge it from the side, um, or maybe the front. Charges up the battery, powers this circuit. We could probably get, we can get rid of this, definitely, because this is a three volt battery that'll power this and our, um, and our sensors. And yeah, simple, easy peasy. You know what? That's thick, though. Three layers like that. Although this, yeah, no, that'll have to be pretty close to that in height. So, hmm. I wonder if I can make that a little larger and then put battery input under there or under there. That might make more sense.
but still, still that's high. Hmm. I don't know. Don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'll have to think about it. I have to think about it. Okay, well, when you have two chips, one of, one of which you're adjusting using, um, using your latest code, and you've got another chip that you're using in your um, implementation for test installed inside the device, it's a really good idea to actually, when you flash changes to the develop chip that's in the dev board, that you take that chip out, move it over. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Okay, it's rock, rock solid, it seems. Altitude. And azimuth. And that's at it. 100 samples to get the average. Now, when I put, and that's using the board that goes on the telescope. That chip's going on the telescope. The only thing that's changing is the sensors now. But when I install it with the sensors on the telescope, it starts jumping around. So what is that about? That's got to be about the azimuth sensor on the telescope. Ah, oh, it just never ends. Now I've blown up this this regulator. Oh. oh, it just never ends. Okay, so I don't know what happened to this thing. It um, might have uh, might have short 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 circuited it or something. But the cable that was connected to well, I think this sensor. Um, packed it in when that got packed in, when that blew up, when this guy overheated, I don't know what the hell happened. In any event, um, built a new um, test bed sensor for this, made sure that this test, this sensor was working, it's working in the new um, environment. I have confirmed that, um, what have I confirmed? I've confirmed that all of the sensors are now working. Oh yeah, there was a there was a flaky cable that had uh, there is a flaky connection in this cable somewhere. I couldn't identify it from where the wire from the wires don't look damaged, so I don't know what uh, what that's all about. But I was getting gain errors, so that means it was missing bits, and that was probably contributing to the jitteriness that we saw on the because this was the cable from the uh, azimuth sensor on here. So replace that cable. It's now stable, and um, I now need to build a new implementation of this guy, because this guy's, well, this guy's toast. I need to build a new implementation of this guy anyways, because I want to have the battery and the display. So, um, yeah, onwards, and, you know, I hope it's upwards, but somehow I don't know. I don't think so. Okay, there it is. No more... No more jitter on the azimuth axis. Things seem to be moving smoothly. And yeah, so I just spent eight, maybe six hours chasing down a faulty cable. Man, oh man, hardware. It's almost as bad as software.